Hi, I'm Dr. David DeRose. I'm a physician, an MD. I have board specialties in internal medicine and preventive medicine, but I've also got a master's in public health degree. And that degree and the profession that goes along with it has brought me in contact with public health professionals throughout the world. Usually I'm rubbing shoulders with people in the American Public Health Association, and a lot of the discussion that I've heard over the last three decades relates to problems here in our United States. We're often talking about data coming out of the Centers for Disease Control or research that the National Institutes of Health is doing. But last year, I was invited to speak at a conference in Europe. And in preparing to speak there, actually on the subject of high blood pressure, I decided that I needed to look at more than data from the United States, I needed to look at data from the World Health Organization. And as I started looking at some of the best data from the WHO, from the World Health Organization, I was amazed. Over a billion people on our planet have high blood pressure. And in the eyes of the World Health Organization researchers, the single largest risk factor when it comes to what we call non-communicable diseases, things like stroke and heart attack and cancer, the single largest risk factor is high blood pressure. With that in mind, it's shocking to me that only about 50% of the people in America and often worse in other parts of the world, that's what the data shows, are controlling their blood pressure. What is the missing link that is keeping people from optimizing their blood pressure control? Now, if you know my background, you might say, well, you're a great person to talk about this. You've written a best-selling book on high blood pressure. And it's true, our book, 30 Days to Natural Blood Pressure Control, has been out for several years. It's riding high on the charts. When you look at Amazon top preventive medicine books and Kindle, or you look at best-selling blood pressure books on Amazon, you'll see our book there. But a lot of the things we write about, some people say, well, I knew about that already. I knew I should be eating better. I knew I should lose weight. I knew exercise was important. But one of the missing links is focusing on blood fluidity, focusing on the science of what we call hemorrheology. I call it the Methuselah factor. Here's why. Researchers have found if your blood is less fluid, you will not get good oxygenation to your tissues. That's right. They can actually put an oxygen sensor on your finger or on your earlobe. And if they do measurements on your blood and they show your fibrinogen, a clotting protein is higher, or you have worse blood viscosity. These are all things that make your blood less fluid. If your blood is less fluid, you're going to get less oxygen to your tissues. Then you say, well, what does all this have to do with high blood pressure? It has this to do with it. Your tiny blood vessels have a lining. In fact, all your blood vessels are lined, but the special lining cell that we're talking about is called the endothelium. These endothelial cells, if they don't get enough oxygen, they're not healthy. And if they're not healthy, they don't make a special compound in optimal amounts. That compound is called nitric oxide. Nitric oxide is a natural blood vessel relaxant. So let, let's bring this picture together. Poorer blood fluidity, you get less oxygen delivery to your tissues, including the lining cells of your blood vessels. If the lining cells of your blood vessels are not healthy, they don't make nitric oxide as well as they should. And you say, well, so what does that have to do with my blood pressure? Nitric oxide relaxes blood vessels. So if you're not making the nitric oxide you should, your blood vessels are stiffer. And stiffer blood vessels require more blood pressure to circulate your blood. So here it comes full circle. If you're trying to figure out what could I do to improve my blood pressure, the missing link might be improving your blood fluidity. You say, okay, so I need to improve my blood fluidity. How do I improve my viscosity? How, how do I make my blood more fluid? Well, in our book, The Methuselah Factor, we give a 30-day plan that can help you do that. But let me give you one factor, and this is actually a commonly overlooked factor when it comes to health. It's donating blood. That's right, donating blood. Researchers in Europe 
looked at regular blood donors. They followed these individuals over the course of a year. They were donating blood four times throughout the course of the year. They looked at the impact of that regular blood donation on their blood pressure. And they found that on average, the regular blood donors lowered their systolic blood pressure some 12 points. Their diastolic blood pressure also dropped some seven points. What happens when you donate blood? In general, your blood fluidity improves. Your Methuselah factor improves. Have you got the big picture? One of the missing links to controlling your blood pressure might be no further away than improving your blood fluidity. And the answer to improving the blood fluidity may be something as simple is getting on the phone, calling your local blood center, and donating blood. Isn't that amazing? Improve your Methuselah factor, improve your blood vessels, improve your blood pressure. And one of the ways to do it, regular blood donation.